This previous weekend, I had the opportunity to watch the six-part Dragon Age-inspired or Dragon Age-based Netflix series, Absolution. And I want to talk about the content of this series because I think it has important ramifications for the development of the franchise of Dragon Age in general, specifically for the games. Now, I'm not going to go through a comprehensive review, but I will have occasional spoilers, so beware in case you don't want to be spoiled. That said, I thought it was pretty good. I would give the series a 6.5 to a 7, maybe a solid 7. It was not amazing. I think the characters needed more character development. Six episodes for such a series seemed a bit skimpy, and I might have wished for eight in total for more character development. That said, I liked most of the characters, except for the antagonist, this Magister. But in general, I thought it was a pretty good depiction of the Dragon Age world. We got, for the first time, a live-action bird's-eye view of Tevinter, something that, in general, we've only heard about. You read about it in various codices, and of course you can talk extensively in Dragon Age Inquisition with Dorian, who's a very cool companion, and he tells you a lot about Tevinter. Needless to say, many, if not all, of the rumors seem to be true. The practice of blood magic, the perception of slaves, and in general, how people are treated. This seems to concord with what we know about Tevinter. And, as I said, I wanted to talk about the implications of this for the franchise, the gaming franchise going forward. Because there will be a massive spoiler coming up, and on top of that, the fact that it takes place in Tevinter, I think, is very much pointing to the extreme likelihood that, in its majority, Dragon Age Dreadwolf probably will have Tevinter as its base. And let's not forget at the end of Dragon Age Inquisition, Trespass or the DLC, the very, very end, you plop down the knife directly into Tevinter, which tells us once again, all signs are pointing to Tevinter as the setting for the next Dragon Age. The fact that it's connected to the games is also indicated because in the series, they talk about the Inquisition. One of the characters is a member of the Inquisition. And although they don't specifically state the time, I do think that this Netflix series is situated somewhere between the events of Trespasser and the end of Dragon Age Inquisition where you defeat Corypheus. So somewhere in between there, maybe a year thereafter. Because the Inquisition is still in full force, and the uncertain events of what you choose as an ending for Trespasser also have not come to pass, based on what one could observe during the series. But the truly big revelation here is the revelation of something or someone referred to as the Crimson Knight. And this Crimson Knight is none other than Meredith, Knight Commander of Kirkwall. Now, if you play Dragon Age 2, which I think is the weakest of the titles of Dragon Age, but nonetheless still entertaining, an action packed with lore and information, of course, you would know that Meredith, at the end of the game, effectively goes apeshit. And she has a red lyrium sword, and Hawk is forced to fight her, and she ends up losing, of course. And towards the end of the fight, she becomes petrified as a red lyrium statue. And everyone who finished the game thinks, okay, that's the end of the Knight Commander Meredith. She was a loony, she lost her mind in her zealotry against the mages, whatever. And on top of that, of course, she was corrupted by the Red Lyrium, because we all know that Red Lyrium makes you go crazy. Confirmed multiple times by Varric, as well as some other people in Dragon Age Inquisition, as well as during the events of Dragon Age 2, where Varric's brother goes insane due to the presence of Red Lyrium. We also know or discover that Lyrium on some level is probably alive. We discover this during the course of Dragon Age Inquisition as well as some of the DLC. And Red Lyrium, consequently, is also alive in some sense. It is organic. What does this have to do with the former Knight Commander Meredith in the context of Dragon Age 2? Well, we find out that the Crimson Knight is none other than Meredith, the former Knight Commander of Kirkwall, who somehow miraculously has survived her transformation, or at the very least, her consciousness has survived her transformation into a Red Lyrium statue. That was certainly a wow moment because none of us expected Meredith to have survived the ending of Dragon Age 2, much less for her consciousness or her spirit to be housed in some kind of Red Lyrium statue. Needless to say, towards the end, you can also see the surrounding Red Templars, very similar to the type of Red Templars you encounter in Dragon Age Inquisition. Now, of course, this has implications for the second season, which likely will happen, because the story will continue. But on top of that, it certainly has some meaning for the game. I don't think they put this Dragon Age series together, Dragon Age Absolution, to have no impact and no relationship whatsoever to the game franchise. And I think the proof in the pudding is the presence of Meredith in her Red Lyrium statue, or whatever it is that she's become. The fact that she survived is an indication that Red Lyrium 
is a very important thing going forward, as it was obviously in Dragon Age Inquisition, and will continue to be in the next Dragon Age series. Furthermore, we've discovered that Red Lyrium is not only alive in some sense, can not only mutate and warp people, as we already knew, if we look at the Templars and we even look at Meredith towards the end of Dragon Age 2, but it can in fact house the consciousness of beings. That has never been documented before, but clearly Red Lyrium is very powerful. And the implication here is that's going to play a massive role in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Because think about it from this angle. Why would they reveal such an incredibly potent and powerful property of Red Lyrium, such as housing the spirit and or consciousness of dead beings, if they have no intention of talking about it or implementing it in the next game? Why on earth would they present it here in a Netflix series that seems so tangential to everything? This isn't just a side detail. This is perhaps the greatest revelation concerning Lyrium, or more specifically Red Lyrium, that has ever been shown to us. And I think one thing we never really find out about is just how much Solus, the Dreadwolf, Fen Harel, knows about both Lyrium and Red Lyrium. He knows a lot more than he ever let on, and a lot more than he ever told us. So presumably, he knows about the origin of Lyrium, and presumably he also knows about the corruption that takes place in the context of Lyrium. He might even know the origin of the old gods, or how Darkspawn had come to be. We just don't know. But I think regardless, this red Lyrium factor will be huge in the forthcoming game. And it probably almost certainly was produced in conjunction with people who work on the game. So we might even meet the characters that are featured in Absolution in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, or at the very least they might be mentioned. Or who knows, maybe, just maybe, this is crazy, some of them might be actual playable companions of the protagonist in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Could be, you never know. So overall, a pretty good animated series, a solid seven. The characters are pretty nifty, I liked all of them. They could have used more character development, but nonetheless, overall, pretty good. You had a nice showcasing of Tevinter, and then a brief showcasing of Navara, and all these things that are mentioned in codices and the lore and in the game, and I appreciated that. And I have to say it was nice to see Dragon Age come to life in the form of an animated series. And I am looking forward to the next one, whenever that is released, if it is released. But huge implications with the Red Lyrium, with the return of Meredith for the franchise going forward, no doubt. And if there's a season two, or even a season three, I think that it's very intentional on their part that they will make calculated lore insertions that are relevant to the Dragon Age franchise in general, and things that we otherwise have not experienced or found out about in the game, which is another reason to watch the series. I definitely recommend it, and I'm looking forward to the next season. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. Please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. Appreciate it. I'll check you out next time. Take care.